Hello again, and thank you for joining us. My name is Charlie Joyce, and I'm happy to welcome you to the Providence College Podcast. Once again, we are joined by our producer, Chris Judge, of the class of 2005. Our guest today is Teddy Curitzy, a member of the class of 2019 from Grafton, Mass. He is one of the first majors in the college's new musical theater track and is the director of the upcoming student production of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, on campus. Teddy began building a resume in the performing arts beginning in 2002 with Irish step dance instruction. He is a baritone tenor singer, plays the clarinet and bass clarinet, and has been a choreographer, conductor, and stage manager. Teddy has acted and or sung in more than a dozen musicals and other productions at the college and community theater levels. His PC credits include Hamlet, 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, Bat Boy, and The Laramie Project. Welcome to the Providence College Podcast, Teddy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Let's jump right in and talk about You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, really an American musical classic. It will be presented on February 15th through the 17th in the Boab Studio Theater in the Smith Center for the Arts. What's special, I think, about this production is that it's an entirely student design production. And Teddy, what does that actually entail? How many students as well will be involved? We have a cast of seven students, uh, ranging from freshmen to seniors, um, including myself. And for the design portion, we have uh, like you said, all student designers um, from seniors to juniors. So what that entails design-wise is we have a costume designer um, that is a student, we have a sound designer, we have a lighting designer, we have props and a set designer, um, as well as our production team, including our stage manager, who is also a junior, and a assistant um, stage manager, who is a freshman. So it's really... Um, a wonderful experience, honestly, uh, to work with uh, my friends and, and collaborators that are also students, uh, because out in the, pro the real profession, uh, you're working with other, prof you're working with other um, people who have really had more experience and being able to work and learn is something different. Um, which I think is so special. I mean, because we are at college and it, it is all about learning and growing um, and pursuing something that you want to. And it's with those students uh, who want to um, that make it so special. That sounds so exciting what you say. <laughs> is, is there any kind of faculty or other oversight in something like this? Oh, yes, of course. So um, this is my senior capstone. Um, so I do have a faculty advisor. Um, so he, uh, Jimmy Kalitri, who is also the uh, building manager of the Smith Center of the Arts, um, he's also an associate professor there, um, down there as well. Um, he's really um, kind of like held my hand for the very beginning of it, kind of leading me. Um, he's also been um, our director, my director, uh, for the past couple of productions, including Bat Boy and um, the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Um, so just being able to watch him and kind of learn like the process as well as be in that process has really, really helped me because um, I definitely am one of those people who is like a multi-sense learner. So like I need a visual, I need an audio, I need to the experience as well to really learn and be engaged to produce something like this. Great. Uh, you are not only uh, directing Charlie Brown, but you have the role of Snoopy. Uh, is this something that uh, that's difficult to juggle for you, the, the, the dual role nature? Yes. Um, as a musical theater major, I wanted for my capstone not to only direct, but to have some f form of a performance aspect. Um, and the way that that came was just we were doing auditions and I realized Snoopy was not like a main front role. So it was something that I felt I could juggle and I talked to my advisor and he's like, yeah, this would be an amazing opportunity because you have actually in the real world, real world, so many people who actually direct and star and stuff. And I didn't want really to be the fore forerunner for anything like that. Um, you hear some people out there who are like, I directed, I produced, I choreographed, I acted. And I'm not one to really like be... A braggart with that kind of stuff so I knew that when it came to this it was something I wanted to 
be in but not like star in or be like the the showrunner for honestly so yeah that's how that came and it is I mean it is difficult um being a director with students and also being a student because they're your friends um and you're just trying to find that fine line of professionalism with them and make sure that they understand that during rehearsal I am the director and outside of rehearsal we're friends and I mean it's that again that fine line of what can we talk about what can you understand for um, criticism and um, constructive criticism and what can you take from that so yeah now this is as you reference uh, you know this is your first opportunity to fully direct on your own a theatrical production tell us a little bit more Teddy about how this opportunity came about yeah um, so as I said, this is my senior capstone, and as a theater major, instead of doing like a senior thesis like some um, departments do, like the history department or the English department, um, we do a creative capstone where we propose a form of the arts. So other students that are seniors in the theater department, we've done, um, people have written shows, people are doing cabarets, people are engaging with um, specifically like the children's theater um, community. So like there's people who are working with directly only St. Pius, which is actually really cool. Um, and for me, I originally wanted to do some form of a musical review or cabaret. And then I thought about it and we, only do one musical a year here at Providence College. We do three productions in total. Um, and there's always an opportunity for a student-run production, so that's considered the fourth uh, the fourth production. And we've never done a musical as a student-run, independent student uh, production. And I thought, you know, why not? Why not, like, at least apply and, like, try and submit a proposal where we do a musical? And originally that musical was going to be Little Shop of Horrors, um, but Trinity's doing it here in Providence, so I felt, ooh, I, I should step back from that. And I was originally going to do it as a um, more concert musical where we, we stand and it's more presented in a formal style. But we started working on it, and I got approved to do You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And we thought about it, and you said it yourself. It's a, it's a classic tale. Um, it's a classic form of art, the comic strips of Charles Schultz. Um, and we didn't want to take or strip any integrity of that from what we were going to do. So we decided to do it in its full entirety. And we're using ca classic costumes, the yellow polo shirt with like the black line for Charlie Brown. Um, you, we have all the classic characters. You have Charlie Brown, you have Lucy, you have Schroeder, you have Peppermint Patty, um, you have Snoopy. And it wasn't something I wanted to change in any form and after that I was like you know what I, I've actually uh, the past couple of years have applied for the research grant research grants here at Providence College and I have applied using different a, a different like project each year um, not trying to re change or re um, configure a project and this year I was like you know your good man Charlie Brown is is something that is very close to me and probably like something that a lot of people here can can understand and can can sympathize with whether that's connecting with the characters connecting with the music connecting with the acting because art is such a human form of connection and so I applied to work with uh, St. Pius as well and try to work uh, with the students and have them come over here and, and see the production because art is something that isn't as used or connected with nowadays, I personally feel. Um, and it's so important, especially in classrooms and with kids, to, to have them in, engaged not only with the sciences that they usually do, but the arts because it's a creative form just as much as you can say science can be creative in the thoughts of like what is a theory and how can you come up with a, a theory it's it's creative at the end of it i mean it's it's something that is a, a basis in a pillar to like humanity i feel so i i wanted to work with them and i got approved and so we're here right now working on your good man charlie brown 
uh, not only for the community uh, of Providence College, but uh, the community of Providence as well, Providence, think, Rhode Island. I think that's wonderful. I am familiar with the college's relationship with St. Pius. Yes. In this case here, tell us a little more of, of the specifics and, and how do the youngsters uh, react to, to this opportunity? Yeah, um, so last, uh, last semester, we had a great opportunity. We had a children's theater class and we started working with St. Pius a little closer. And at the end of the year, our final was we presented a small short uh, play and version of The Giving Tree. And we had just about the entire school show up um, to watch the performance. And we've been working with um, especially the fifth graders of St. Pius. Um, and hopefully what we're working with is we're hoping to have them come over to um, Providence College and see a full show of um, full viewing of the show. And if not, what we're going to do is we're going to bring it over to them instead because we, we are so passionate and we want this for them so much. And, I mean, when we brought over the, the, short, uh, the short play, they were going crazy because we were using, like, references, like, that they understood, like, Fortnite, and they were, like, going crazy. And we have <laughs> some of those modern references in the Charlie Brown that we're using this, um, this winter. And I think it's something that they would understand because I, I think about – Christmas and I think Charlie Brown I think Thanksgiving and Christmas and your uh Charlie Brown's Christmas and you think of Thanksgiving Charlie Brown and it's something I think that like I said that all ages can kind of connect with um and so we're hoping to use it that way uh to connect with them wow what a gift for those St. Pius people <laughs> that's that's wonderful it's more of a gift for us honestly yeah uh, to be able to do this great great you know you mentioned before some re a research grant what kind of research goes into something uh, like like you're a good man, Charlie Brown? Is it about Charlie Charles Schultz, Schultz himself, or, yeah. or otherwise? Um, it's a it's a it's a combination of everything. It's um, there have been a couple different versions of your good man, Charlie Brown, produced um, on Broadway, um, and we're doing the revised division uh, of it. Um, and it, for us, it's really connecting Charles Schultz to the characters and how he wanted the integrity, what integrity he wanted uh, with those characters um, when it came to uh, the musical. Because when he created the characters, he wanted to keep it a comic strip. He didn't originally want it to be a movie. He didn't want any of this um, production to come through besides the comic strips. And so we had a couple of different autobiographies that I had my cast read of him um, and kind of understand that the integrity of Charlie Brown and the characters of the Peanuts in this musical are slightly different than the comic strips and the movies. Um, and that's the way he wanted it because he didn't want it to be exactly like the comic strips, which is kind of cool. Uh, Cause you have this, you, when you see um, Charlie Brown, you have college students playing kids and we make sure that you know that we are college kids. We're not kids because it is that integrity that Charles Schultz wanted was when they did it, they had adults playing it. And he wanted to make sure that everyone knew that these are adults playing kids. These aren't adults trying to be kids themselves. Um, and so we've been working a lot with different forms of play um, and the idea of what play really means um, to the show. Play has so many different meanings. It's a noun, it's a verb, it's an adjective. You can go play, you can go see a play. Something can be playful. And when it comes to this show, I think it, it's all about that self-discovery of what play can be. When you think about when you're a kid, you, you play pirates, you play princess, you play house. And that's kind of the stuff we wanted to really find and invent with our version of Charlie Brown was this idea of play and having it be adults playing these kids playing Charlie Brown, playing Lucy, playing Linus. And so that was the research we kind of went into was these dis different forms of acting and these different forms of um, realism almost with these characters. So that's the kind of the research we've been going to. And obviously we watched a lot of the films and we listened to a lot of the uh, the songs that went with the films and we, watched, uh, we looked at a lot of the different comic strips as well to kind of see the integrity and how Charlie Brown had changed over the years from when he first started it to like when um, sadly he passed away. Um, 
because once he passed away, they didn't make any more comic strips of Charlie Brown. So everything that it is is Charles Schultz's hand, which is really cool. So, yeah. Teddy, what have been the most challenging and most enjoyable aspects of directing uh, up to this point, would you say? So the most difficult, I think, would just be working and finding a almost completeness with the show because you can work on a show and you can you can keep working you can keep redoing or refixing little portions that like you don't like but there's only so much that one person or team can do to find a a wholeness in a show and i think it's finding that balance of okay we've rehearsed this and it's good and I, we shouldn't touch this because it is good. There's nothing that we should fix, even though you do it so many times and it becomes mundane. And you're like, okay, we want to do something new with it, but that's new not to us. It's new to someone else when they come in and making sure we find that and know that for them it's new. And for us, it may be mundane now, but for someone else it's going to be it's going to be new. And I think the the most rewarding portion is just working with others on something we absolutely love. Um, theater is, is a love of mine that I have had since I was a kid. Um, I used to have a stutter as a child, and that's how I kind of got into theater, was this memorizing lines and learning how to like think before I talk, almost. And so it's been a connected, it's been in my, the, uh, it's been in my family theater um, since I was a kid. I remember going to the theater as a child, seeing musicals on Broadway and in Boston and in Worcester um, and then community theater as well and I remember seeing high school theater and it's 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 almost too enjoyable to to be a part of something like this with others who who really do care because you can go into a show and you can have an actor or you can have um, a designer who who is there just to do the work to get the class credit to to just do something to learn something new but then there's that group of kids or students and adults that do it for the love of it and the passion of it and the inspiration of what theater can be theater is inspiring and theater it can be inspiring to an actor it can be inspiring to an audience member it, it it's it's a never-ending loop of of inspiration i personally feel and that's the most rewarding rewarding thing that i've had directing charlie Brown uh this winter which is great teddy i think some people might find it surprising that a school of our size has a concentration in in musical theater give us a brief history <laughs> on how the uh, the program got started oh yeah of course so um, a couple years ago, we had a senior. Uh, we had a student, Katrina Preveo. She graduated in 2015. Uh, really, kind of carved the way for this musical theater track. Uh, she she had a love of theater, um, and we hadn't before her done a musical every single year here at Providence College. It might have been every three to four years, and she really was determined when coming here uh, to change that. And so. Uh, she came in and she did the theater arts, um, theater arts. She got her theater arts degree, but with that, she kind of applied for that uh, make your own major kind of thing, uh, program here, and she really carved the way with the theater department to be like, no, this is something just as important as our theater arts um, major because we do have uh, a concentration in performance as well as design here at Providence College almost. And she was like, well, why not just add this? Because it's it's not only, it's it's only going to help us. It's not going to hurt us. And so she uh, worked with both the music department and the theater department to kind of carve this different track. And when she was a senior, her and Jimmy Kalitri and Wendy Ol Dr. Wendy Oliver, who is the um, head of the department, went uh, to the faculty senate and kind of presented this um, major. And it, it got approved. And... Ironically, that was the year that I was a prospective um, senior um, of high school looking for colleges, and I saw this at this new track, and I absolutely fell in love with it. And so me and uh, another fellow student, Ashling Sheehan, were the first two to actually go through the complete track and uh, graduate with it. Um, so it's very exciting, um, and it involves not only the theater department, we have different classes in the music department that we have to take. Um, and actually this year, 
were um, taking an arts and activism class, um, which is a PS, which is through the PSP program here, which is really really cool. We work with Joe Wilson, who is a local actor down at Trinity Rep, um, and it's it's cool to have a a, a different view on the arts um, with that class. So, yeah, it's it that's kind of like the history of it and how it became. It's, it's a lot because it's a little more, because it is a concentration, it is a little more um, hands-on than the theater arts major, where we have to take more specific classes, um, such as we have to take music theory, and we took like a musical theater advanced analysis and performance class, where we literally were learning music every other week and performing it every other week. Um, and what's also really cool about Providence College is we have a great concertorium program with Brown and with Rick. And I was able to take classes at Rick um, because we just didn't, we don't have the uh, the numbers here to take some, uh, to produce some of those classes here. And so I was able to take a theater of the golden age of Broadway class where we were literally learning a different piece of music every other day and producing it and performing it. And it, it really helped create our, our, plethora and our, our musical theater binders for performance um, to go out on audition and uh, yeah so it's really cool. Over the recent winter break you had the opportunity to travel to uh, Los Angeles and take part in the PC in Hollywood uh, program that's one thing I certainly wanted to ask you yes. about and for those unfamiliar with PC in Hollywood it's uh, it's an, an annual th uh, an annual three-day program for about a dozen students and it features tour tours and networking with the uh, alumni in the in the entertainment industry what was that experience like for you Teddy it was absolutely amazing I um, personally have never been outside of New England before so this was kind of my first like big travel uh, debut of going somewhere and uh, I couldn't have been blessed to have a, a, a better uh, program to go with. Um, as a junior, I wasn't able to do a study abroad program. Um, so I kind of took this as my little like mini like study abroad program almost. Um, and it was absolutely eye opening uh, out in LA. It's, it's completely different. I mean, the weather A is really nice and it was dry and it was 60 degrees every single day. Everyone was wearing like spring like gear with like summer shoes and it was really great. But um, besides that, um, we were able, like you said, we were able to network with some amazing alumni that you wouldn't really know were alumni from Providence College unless you go on this trip. Um, we met with John Boab, who, which is really, really cool because a uh, my Charlie Brown is going to be in the John Boab studio. Um, but I'm also the John Boab scholarship holder right now um, at Providence College. So I was able to meet with um, John Boab, who was an alumni from uh, 55, who uh, directed some really cool TV shows like, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, I think he did Full House, and I think he did Family Mat some Family Matters episodes, which is really, really cool. I'm not 100% sure about the Family Matters. I know he did Full House. Um and we got to go to his penthouse apartment and just talk to him for a good hour about his his experience and how he got into the arts because the theater department hadn't been created yet here at Providence College um, in the 50s, which was really cool. And so it was a really student-run production um, and student-run uh, program here. Um, I think it was called The Pyramid Players, um, and it was produced down in the basement of Harkins, uh, where the old basketball court used to be. They used to share it um, as a performance space, too, which was really, really funny to think about. Um, and so we got to hear about his experience. And then um, a couple other people we got to meet was um, Tara McLaughlin, who um, was one of the first um students on the PC Hollywood trip and she works as she works for focus uh, focus features which is part of Universal and they do some of the more artsy films like uh, I think they did Black Klansman and recent uh, they're gonna be doing the new Downton Abbey movie and so we just got to hear her experience of how she got out there into the marketing field uh, of entertainment and it was almost, it, like I said, it was eye-opening to hear these inspirational stories of them just deciding to have 
the chutzpah and have the guts to just go out into LA and really just try. And what's really great is we every story we heard was a success sto- success story, um, and it really was inspiring to us. And I mean, another really cool person we met was um, Charles Dewey, who I think was actually like the first, one of the first, like absolute first, uh, to do the PC and Hollywood trip. And he's a writer for Criminal Minds. And this week, his first episode that he co-wrote premiered on uh, CBS. And so we all got to watch that. And it was so cool because we got to also go onto the set of Criminal, Mo- Criminal Minds and just experience the production side of what happens with a TV show. And it was really cool to see how different it really is that it's it's in a giant like like basically like an air like airplane hangar with all these different sets and all these lights and these makeshift um different um houses that they can kind of like make and these boards that they can put together and create in less than like three days i think he said to create a new set for every different episode which is really crazy and then they have some set um they have some like define set pieces that they use because it happens in every single episode so we got to like tour through that and so it like I said it was eye-opening um and an amazing experience and it really puts in perspective how um how small the industry can really be because you have those connections and you have those relationships that you can make um just through being a like alumni at a college like Providence. So it was great. That's awesome. And I heard that the group was able to squeeze in a luncheon with John O'Hurley, class yes. of 76. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, John O'Hurley, uh, who used to be Mr. Peterman on Seinfeld, um, we got to have lunch with him. Um, and he just, he was able to share his story of how he made it um, first in New York and how he went out to LA. And how he, I mean, started off at Providence College and how he moved out to uh, New York and then L.A. Um, and it, it, like I said, it was an inspiring story um, of success and uh, difficult uh, times that he just said that it happens for everyone. And it really it really struck with a lot of us actors, too, because he, he was one of the only actors we really met with on the trip a lot of the people we met were producers or writers or um, part of the marketing team which or directing and so for me personally being able to talk to uh, John O'Hurley really really was inspiring as I said and um, kind of gave us like I said the chutzpah to like really pursue this because I know um, the other students that were the theater arts uh, majors there really we all really look up to him because we we've we see his face down at Smith because he's one of the on our alumni board, and he's on like the scholarship board, and we see his name with like students that we know that are our friends, and that could be us one day, which is really really cool. So yeah, you know, PC in Hollywood raises the point I think Teddy that the uh, the opportunity for students to explore and experience life beyond campus is really a, a big part of the PC education. Mm-hmm. In your case, you get a jump start on exploring the performing arts field when uh, when you were much younger. Uh, what have been the most impactful community and other external experiences uh, that you've you've participated in? Would you say? I so a doing um, high school theater. Our director uh, Megan Patrick is the educational and outreach uh, director for the Hanover Theater in Worcester. So we were a just from the get go given a a jump start into more of a professional um, theater experience, which was really really cool. Um, other experiences, I I was very honored. Um, I did a staged reading at the Hanover Theater for a show called Sockdology, which was um, directed and written by Jeffrey Thatcher, who wrote um, The Duchess and has been the screenwriter for uh, shows like that, which was really really cool. And then being in Providence, Providence is such a a, a beginning for art. Um, being so close to Boston too, we've had the opportunity to listen to different stage readings and be part of talkbacks here in Providence, uh, Providence, Rhode Island, like Trinity Rep, or going out to Boston and being able to watch a show at the Boston Opera House and then realizing, oh, one of those uh, performers was a 
PC alumni and we were able to outreach to them and uh, talk to them after the show. Um, or even with like John O'Hurley, he did, he's in Chicago right now. He just actually hit his like 2000th, 2000th performance, he said. Um, and uh, other opportunities that we've been give, I've been given is um, we do a theater festival every year called the Kennedy Center Theater uh, Collegiate for the Arts uh, program. And every year I have um, been able to um, be a part of it, whether it's the acting portion of the Irene Ryan Scholarship, or um, most recently I was an internship for the musical theater um, competition there. So I was able to not only watch all these unique performances, but be an administrator and a uh, almost a manager to help uh, run the program, which was really, really cool. And this year, actually, I'm part of the arts admin program, as well as the Irene Ryan's competition, which I'm very, very excited about because we go next week. And so we compete for one slot out of like 400 people. And Providence College actually was selected as uh, one of 10 um one of 10 uh, colleges to present selected scenes from a previous production. So I think it was like 70 productions submitted and only 10 of us got accepted. And we were the only musical, uh, we were one of two musicals selected for this uh, presentation. So we're very excited about that too, because Providence College is really beginning to step their game up with um, their theater arts program. And everyone's starting to know that. And it's, it's, it's great to see how appreciative other people and other other um, institutions are of our program here. So yeah, it's great. Teddy, you're coming up. Well, actually, you've started your final semester here at the, at the college. Yes. Uh, commencement is in May. You have so much in the way of of skills and talent and experiences to draw on. What are your hopes for immediately after after graduation and uh, maybe longer term? Yeah, so um, I'm already starting to audition for Summer Stock Theater and different programs. Um, I actually have a audition tomorrow down at uh, URI for Theater by the Sea, which is the Narragansett program. Um, and then in a couple weeks I go audition for the Priscilla Beach Theater Company for the summer, as well as um, in March, <clears throat> I'm going out to New York to audition for Festival 56, which is a summer stock theater program up in Chicago. So those are more of my short-term pro, uh, short um, goals and hopes and aspirations. And actually, I'm uh, applying to get my master's here um, for the higher education program for next year. And I, like with directing, a huge portion of theater for me is this educational outreach. Um, and it's very important to me. And so my longer goals hopefully is to get my master's um, in higher education and then one day go back to get my MFA in musical theater so that I can teach um, at a collegiate and high school level for theater. Um, theater is something I think should be accessible to everyone just as much as reading and writing can be. Um, and so that's kind of my goals is to be able to express and to produce and to um, create that theater for those that may not be um, easily uh, accessible, uh, may not be easily accessible to. So yeah, those are my longer goals really, so yeah. Well, we wish you much prosperity in all that you do going forward. Thank you so much, Charlie. Thank you for being our guest today. I was very excited, it was great. <laughs> and thanks to you, our listeners, for joining us on the Providence College Podcast. You can, can subscribe to the podcast in all the usual places, including iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. If you like what you hear, please review and share it with others. We welcome feedback at podcast at providence.edu. Thanks again to our producer, Chris Judge. I'm Charlie Joyce. Until next time. <laughs>